Erasmus program at uh, Refugees International. So we're just gonna give it a few minutes and we will go ahead and start. Okay. Hello, Horia, you hear me very well? Yes. Perfect. So we, we are already uh, started the webinar. We're already live. Uh, thank you, everyone who, who joined us for this session. Uh, during this session today, we will be talking about the Refugees Fellows, uh, the Fe Refugee Fellows uh, Program at Refugees International, which is a fellowship we started last year. We have with me here uh, in the in the session, also two of our alumni, two of the fellows who have benefited from the fellowship last year, Farhad Rotto, who is a Yazidi refugee residing in France, and Kaimuddin Ikram, who is an Afghan refugee residing in Germany. Uh, during the session today, we will be covering a few topics. The first one, I will be giving an overview about the fellowship. We're going to go through the stages of the applications that you should already know, but we're going to go a bit in details about the stages. And I will be giving some advices on how to complete a successful application. And for sure, we will have we will take any questions do you have, please write it in the Q&A session. You can see in the bar uh, in the Zoom bar below in the screen, there is a Q&A button. Click on it and write your uh, if you have any question. And I will try my best to answer as many questions questions as possible uh, toward the end of the fellow uh, toward the end of the session or if I felt that there is a question that is really about what I'm talking about directly related I will answer it right away again thank you very much for joining I'm going to be sharing my screen a little bit for a short um, presentation to talk about a little bit about the fellowship. Uh, so the fellowship program, or it's the, we call it uh, refugee fellows program that was we started back in 2000, uh, 2023 at RI. The main idea of the fellowship is to support refugee leaders who are already doing advocacy work to support the community across the world. And to be eligible for this application, you should be forcibly displaced individual. What does that mean? That you should be an, someone who have applied for asylum or have been granted asylum or a refugee, an internally displaced person, or sometimes you have been a refugee for a certain time, but after that you get naturalized or you move back to your country, whatever was the uh, the, uh, your your current status, but you have been a refugee or a former refugee at certain time of your life. This is the eligibility criteria of the fellowship. I know that there is a lot of people have been sending me emails regarding their eligibility. I couldn't reply to all the emails because I have been receiving a lot of emails. But if you are not one of these statuses, you are not eligible for the fellowship. I know that some people might be working with refugees, working for refugees or asylums, but they don't have the refugee status, that means they are not eligible. And the fellowship, the main idea of the fellowship is to support the leaders who are already doing the work in their host countries to keep doing their advocacy work and to increase their impact. And through the fellowship, we focus on three main pillars. So what to expect during the fellowship. First is we try to connect our fellows uh, to some high level meetings. For example, if there is uh, like last year, we had the GRF, for example, in Geneva, and we, we managed to bring it was a global refugee forum. We managed to bring our fellows to the forum. Uh, we also had um, uh, some meetings like COP28, which Kaimuddin have participated oh, yeah. in. Yes, Kaimuddin. 
Can you make uh, it zoom in your slides when people are asking? Yeah. Cool. Thank you for for bringing this up. And uh, so we managed to we it's as I was saying it's three main pillars: making sure to that that our fellows have access to policy venues and policymakers through high level meetings, for example, GRF and COP twenty eight, which Kaimuddin will be talking a little bit about it, and also through field work, which Farhad also can give us an overview about how his field work went with our eye. Uh, the second pillar is about resourcing and networking. We try to work with our fellows uh, on their fundraising plans through training or connect them to potential donors. It does not guarantee that the fellows who lead their own organization, that they're gonna get funding through the fellowship. Th there's nothing about the fellowship that guarantees funding for a refugee-led organization, but we try to connect fellows with potential donors, which might uh, fund and which might not fund them. So we cannot overpromise that through the fellowship you will get funding for your uh, organization. And the third pillar is preparedness, where we focus on training. And these training sessions usually are based on a survey that the fellows take at the beginning of the fellowship. And based on the survey, we learn about the needs. And this is why how we customize our training sessions. But for now, I'm going to refer to Kaimuddin, because I know Kaimuddin is can't be with us the whole time uh, of, the, of the session. So Kaimuddin, as a former fellow at RI, would give us just an overview about his experience in joining a high-level meeting like COP28 and a GRF in Geneva. Yes, Kaimuddin. Yeah, first of all, uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share my experience uh, while having this fellowship last year. Um, first of all, you also mentioned about the resources, the networking, the access to the, the policy venues and policy makers that has been given to the fellows by the fellowship. And uh, I had this experience and I will uh, I will share this experience with my uh, in this session with the with the colleagues, and if you have any questions uh, that has not been answered in this session, so you can write to me uh, on my social media or uh, maybe uh, 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 Puriya will share like our context, like email address, so then we can answer uh, accordingly. I uh, through this fellowship, first of all, fellowship will give you a lot of resources. Uh, if you have your own organization. They will give you the resources. They will connect you to the donors. Uh, they will also connect you to the same minded people like uh, they will connect you to those people, those organizations which you both have like same kind of uh, topics and themes. And I think that will be like a good, good opportunity for you, uh, for you all. And then uh, it will also give you the resources somehow uh, that you can manage your work. If you are a researcher, you are writing something, they will also give you some kind of uh, funding for your research work as well. Like if you are doing for field work, so they will give you like the field work uh, resources during the fellowship. And also uh, they will also give you some kind of guidance like uh, in writings because there will be some good and professional mentors uh, at Refugees International. So they will give you like your own experience and also they will give you, they will guide you properly and professionally. At the same time, uh, I had this experience because they will also give you the opportunity of networking because I had this, uh, this experience and during the fellowship, I had participated in SB subsidy body meeting for climate conference. I also had this opportunity to participate in the uh, COP uh, climate conference COP28 in Dubai. And also I had uh, this opportunity to participate in global refugees forum in uh, Geneva, Switzerland. So during the fellowship, I had participated in three like big events uh, related to refugees and uh, climate change. And I, I had this, uh, this, this opportunity not only to expand my knowledge and to do the advocacy for climate change migration, because this is what I am focusing more on, but also will give you the opportunity to expand your network, to connect with your uh, same-minded people, because that will, that, that will be the winner and uh, uh, place that you can connect, you can expand your network. And so that will give you the opportunity that you can find 
some kind of resources, some kind of more opportunities to work more on your topic with uh, like good people there. Also, that will also give you a platform where you can enhance your personal work, like whatever you are doing now, the advocacy that you are doing now for refugees rights, for climate change migration, or any other topic related to refugees. That will give you the, uh, the platform that you can enhance, improve, and also to give a little bit more uh, uh, what I can say, like uh, uh, to, to, to visualize your work, to, uh, to, to enhance the awareness what you are doing for the rights of refugees. And then also you will have the opportunity to have like a collaboration. And uh, I will connect this with what I have done. Like for example, I also wrote uh, a piece uh, and I did this with uh, my colleagues, uh, with other organization, local or national organizations so that you collaboratively working for the same cause. And uh, during the SBs, during the COP, uh, during the uh, GRF and Switzerland, this fellowship had given me immense opportunity, not only to participate there, but also they have given me the opportunity to speak along with experts, along with like high level people, policy makers, being as a refugee. I, I think, you know, uh, I think it's very rare if a refugee or individually you go there and uh, you will have this opportunity to share your experience also to do advocacy for uh, for, for the rights of refugees in such a high level. But I had this uh, opportunity and co where I had uh, where I had spoken not only because uh, not only uh, on the climate change issues on the topic, but also to do some advocacy for climate change migration and also to do some advocacy for climate change issues in Afghanistan. So somehow they will give you a lot of experience, uh, uh, give you a lot of opportunities. Uh, to do uh, more advocacy, to share your knowledge and uh, uh, opportunities in a high level. And I think if there's anything I can share more in. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kaimuddin. As Kaimuddin was highlighting that his engagement have helped him having more access to the high level policymaking venues, but also we have to highlight that some of our fellows couldn't actually make it to such meetings or to such high level events because of their statuses, which doesn't allow them to get visas. And it's sometimes it's very hard for some fellows to get visas. But for those who were able to travel, we would be very happy to make that happen. And we have also with us Farhad Shamarato, if you can just introduce yourself a little bit, Farhad and maybe give us an overview about your experience with Refugees International when it comes to the field work. And we know that you have been uh, in a field trip with RI, and that would be great if you can provide us more information. Thank you. Thanks, Soria. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. My name is Farhad Shamorutu. I am an Iraqi refugee from Ezidi community, the survivors of 2014 genocide that committed by so-called Islamic State in Iraq in 2014. Um, gladly I was and very thankful for being the one of the first member of the cohort of Refugees International Fellow. When it comes to the field work, um, before saying anything, field work is basically always the hard thing, but also the most interesting and important work in the field of people crossing borders, displaced people, refugees, asylum seekers. In last November, with the Refugees International, um, we went to the north of Greece, in the region of Salonika, specifically the camp of Cyrus and few other centers where we met um, refugees from many countries, but mainly from my community, Yazidis from Iraq, who have quitted and crossed border, risked their life, uh, seeking for stability, seeking for new life. And we have faced, we have interviewed many people who actually have lost family members during the way, who have been abused by smugglers, who have been deported back, separated from family members. However, that is the, that was the that's basically the first step of the field work to go to speak to people and to write about their needs and challenges and then the work follow up 
with Refugees International is to write to, advoc to advocate, to make an advocacy campaign as a follow-up of these uh, field trips. After our field trips, we directly try to meet with some decision makers, representative of European countries, specifically those countries who many refugees wanted to be reintegrated or resettled there. For example, Germany, many people have stated they want to go to Germany. They have family members or relatives in Germany. Uh, we directly met with a team of um, specified Team, who, Department of Migration and Refugee at the German embassy, and they connected us with their decision makers and their colleague in Berlin. And now we are planning um, to publish uh, very soon, hopefully, a report about the states of those refugees and asylum seekers we met in Greece, but also the state of their family members and the possibilities where we actually studied and researched the different possibilities uh, the new developments in European policy, the new uh, refugee migration pact, uh, with where are the eligibility of the people can try, where should they go. We try to guide people. We try to advocate before the decision makers, try to find solution for the needs and basic rights of those people, of those asylum seekers or those refugees. All this work would have been very complicated without the help of Refugees International. And I was a person from the community with, the experience, with lived experience as a refugee, as someone who have uh, left his home and forced displaced, and also as, as someone who has connection with the community, but also um, my colleague from Refugees International, Yael, she have had a great value, added value, she was with us. Um, the credibility of Refugees International, who supported our, and the connection and the network of Refugees International supported our mission to get, for example, the authority to go to the camp, to connect quickly with decision makers, uh, to open doors, basically, for uh, this endeavor, for this. Uh, yeah, this is... This is how the field work, uh, field work, it, it's been working with us, and the the field work doesn't end when we go to the camp and we come and write a report and try to report it or to advocate, but we remain connected with the people in the camps. We keep asking questions. We also follow up. Where are those people after six, seven months after we visited them? We're planning to go back then again and see the state of these people. So yeah, there are several there are several steps for the for the field work. Identify the target group, go to the field, go to the, on the grounds, meet with the people, meet with the administrative people, meet with international organization who are actually accompanying and supporting or providing reliefs to those refugees, and then come back with full package of information and knowledge and study the other side, try to find ways and propose policy recommendation for finding solution for those people. I can say this was the work. The work was, of course, not would not be possible only from us as the community and the people who are in need, but the help of Refugees International uh, was um, a gap that was filled and a value that uh, was uh, invaluable. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Farhad, for sharing your experience with us. So as, as you heard from Qayyamuddin about his experience in engaging in high-level meetings and Farhad's experience in engaging in the field research trip, as I will be talking more about what to expect uh, during the field re research or high-level meeting, but first I want to go through the application process that is made from four stages. I will share my screen for those who are not already uh, have opened and registered uh, to start their application. But when you click on apply, you have to create an account. And after you create the account, you can start the application. I'm gonna show you how the application portal look like. This might help you uh, when applying. Like here, it's just me trying to, okay, let's just make this cool. So when you, you click on apply and you create your, your account, you will get to this page where you have to fill an application form 
and write two essays and upload a working plan, as you can see here. If we click at the application form, you will have to file to, to put in your your name, uh, last name, use um, uh, email. As you can see, country of residence. All of these is easy to be done. However, there is one thing that I have to emphasize when you are filling this form. Everything is direct, straightforward. Uh, when it comes to choosing the themes of your advocacy work, I have said here, select up to two themes. And a lot of the application that we have received last week, they have selected all the themes. Don't think that if you select all themes, that will give you a better chance of getting selected that you are working on a lot of things. Uh, it's actually the opposite, right? Because there is no way that a person can be expert in all of these or can be working in all of these and, and really making an impact. So please, try if you're working in more than two, three, maybe, try to choose the top two themes that you work on because this actually would show that actually your work is specific and not about everything. So please, uh, for this question in particular, don't check all of them, unless it's really you're working like on all of them and making impact in all the level of these themes. However, it is best to choose one or two themes that you think your work is very much uh, related to. And this also would help you in showing that you are really uh, focused on a theme or two, not just working on a lot of things. So please pay, pay attention for, for, this, um, for this question. And, and as you can see, as I said, it's direct, um, direct questions where you have maybe to, to, to fill in if you have some links for your work, you can put it here, but this is optional in case it's available. You can complete the application even if you don't have, if you didn't fill uh, the links or you have links to your work. The second step is writing an essay. And this essay is the personal statement, right? In this essay, you have to write about um, how your personal experience of uh, forcibly getting forcibly displaced impact your professional work. So there's like how your personal story impacted your work and talk more about your work. And also I have to be very clear here, don't use chat GPT. 90%, 95% of the applications since last week is chat GPT. And that may be like 90% chance you're not gonna get selected if you're using chat GPT. So when using chat GPT, maybe you can use it to edit, to make sure that you don't have spelling mistake, but you cannot use it to write the application because we can tell, we can see, and we can detect when the application is written chat GPT, and most applications look the same. So like when your personal statement look the same across uh, 200 applications so far, uh, that doesn't, doesn't have a soul about your really personal story. So trust your ability to write your own words and to write your own uh, story. I'd maybe use it for just small edits, but don't use it, chat GPT, to write your personal statement, as I said. Personal statements have to be very specific to your experience. And the second thing also, be specific. So for example, when in the person writing a personal statement, a lot of people will be like, you yeah, and I worked, uh, it will say like, and I worked on different advocacy campaigns uh, to advocate for the right of refugees. Okay, what does that mean? That's good, but like, tell me what the, like, what campaign was that? How, how was the impact? And so like, uh, or you say, and I, uh, let's, I don't know, like, and I advocated for better policies for refugees. Okay, I need to know, like, what did you do? So the general statement to generalize and say statement about like how you campaigned or how uh, you did advocacy, but then not tell me what did you do exactly, this will not help you and will not be the best personal statement. The generic personal statement, which doesn't really show the details of what you work, will not help you to have a successful application. And chat GPT will not write a specific statement. It will be general where like 200 applications look the same because they're just writing the same 
personal statement. Essay two. Essay two is also about the impact of the fellowship. So how the fellowship will help you or support you and your professional journey and leadership, uh, professional leadership journey. And again, the same advices and tips goes here. Don't use a chat a GPT to write this because also you need to be specific how the fellowship will advance your journey. I mean, it cannot be just for networking and um, I'm just trying to, for, to, to remember like what I have read in a lot of um, applications, but it was almost all the same also because chat GPT just give you one, two, three, four and everyone wrote it down and, and it doesn't show me how it will impact you as a person as a, based on your personal story and your professional advocacy experience, how it will help you and not just a general uh, that oh, I'm going to network, I'm going to have a mentor. Uh, this is not only would be the impact of the fellowship. The more specific you make it, the more personal you make your essays, the better the chance that you have a successful application. The fourth step. This one is to write a working plan. What does that mean, to write a working plan? It's what do you expect to work with RI, with Refugee International, during the year? And when writing the working plan, again, the same advice, don't use a chat GPT because it is just giving you a general plan which really say nothing at the end. When I said, and, and you can see here in the instruction, you have the details, at least the three specific advocacy tool. So if you are choosing to have campaigns, you cannot tell me I will... Um, be designing multimedia campaigns to uh, fight for the rights of refugee education. No, this is not how what it means here. When we're saying campaigns and you are choosing campaign as a tool, you have to tell, like your planning have to be realistic. We cannot be doing campaigns in a year and doing publications and a series of webinars. This cannot happen. This is why we have in the... And the question be realistic with an achievable goals. Throughout the whole year, Farhad went on one research trip, right? One publication, and that was it. So it's not about the numbers. It's not about saying, I'm going to do a series of webinars and a series of reports. This is clearly not going to happen. So when we're saying that make your working plan achievable and realistic, that means make it more specific and limited. If you are choosing to say, I'm gonna have a campaign, okay, what does this campaign, what, I mean, not campaigns actually. So a lot of you have been like, I'm gonna do campaigns. I will like, when you're gonna be doing campaigns, campaigns might take three to four months, sometimes more to really implement. So there's no way you're gonna do campaigns and publications and field research to a lot of places. So this is why ChatGPT is not helping you all. Be specific. If you're saying I'm going to do a campaign, exactly what is this campaign about? Who will be the target audience at what you're going to get out of it? This is what you have to focus on. Don't go general about campaigns or when we're talking about webinars. Don't say a series of webinars and which will bring together policymakers and refugees and nonprofits. OK, what does that mean? I need the specificity of if I'm saying I'm having a webinar, okay, a webinar, what this webinar is about, who is going to be, for example, uh, speaking of this webinar, what issue in particular you're going to be talking about during the webinar and why, right? So be specific. And a lot of the time, I have noticed that you would have in your personal statement, in the themes that you are you chose that you doing work on climate change. And but then when it comes to the working plan, your working plan is about education. Right? So your working plan is not really related to what you do and your personal statement is not related to the themes that you have chosen. So now it looks like the application is not really, it's like fragmented, not like coherent. So pay attention to that. If you chose at the beginning when I told uh, when when we showed that you do work on climate change, 
your personal statement have to show what is this work on climate change? And then your work plan have to be related to climate change. It cannot be that you chose a theme on women and girl or climate change, personal statement on uh, legal protection and work plan in education. And this is where you feel like I, I couldn't get the focus of the application or where you really intend to make a difference. So please pay attention to this point. Again, when working on the work plan, be specific, campaign, what is it about? A webinar, not general uh, challenges for education, right? For refugees, for example, you have to be more specific. It's the same field trips. A lot of the application would say, are you intend to do field trips to different camps and community sessions and that also, uh, and community centers, and most of the, um, like, and there is no way you're gonna be able to go to different camps and different community centers in different countries in, in just less than a year. You have to be specific exactly what research trip to where and what you intend to do during the field research trip and the impact of that field research trip. I'm gonna stop here and, and start think, maybe, Maria, yeah, there is uh, several questions yeah, exactly. the, yeah let me we, see yeah we are answering I, I did answer few of them so voila okay uh let me see okay maybe i can give you some questions that uh, we can't answer okay yeah please some people some, some people ask that uh, they can edit the replication because they have already submitted and maybe they now understand that they have made some mistake. Uh that would not be be possible now to reopen the application for people who already submitted. But don't lose the hope because hopefully this application, this fellowship will be every year. If if you missed your chance this this year you can always apply next year and this is why such information this is why we decided to do the information session because we felt that all the applications are going in a totally different uh direction uh what what else i'm trying to go through the questions but how many refugees are targeted this year how many asylum speakers and refugees are targeted this year for this fellowship okay so we will be having five or six uh, fellows and I saw a questions about like the former cohort being mainly from the Middle East. This is not a criteria. It is just based on the application that we received. And this was uh, the, we can say the top of, not the top, but this is the application, the application that we felt uh, would benefit the most of the fellowship, uh, but it is not based on any region. It could, you could be from Africa, you could be from Asia, from Europe, from the US, you can be located anywhere as long as you meet the criteria. And there is one thing also I have to, to emphasize here. If you didn't get chosen, not because you are not good enough or you are not doing enough, but believe us, last year we received a thousand application and we have to hire, we had to have six, felt select six fellows. So six out of thousand. This year, we expect also to have more than a thousand application for just six spots, which make it super hard. And also we're trying to focus on people that we think that they will benefit the most. Some people are really overqualified for this fellowship. Some people are already leaders who have been, uh, who have benefited from other scholarships or fellowships, or they have awards and they're really, we can see them like a mentor for our fellows. We're trying to target the emerging leaders who are already doing the work, maybe for, I don't know, two, three, four years, they're already doing the work, but they need that push or they would benefit from the, from the fellowship more than those who already are in a certain position um, that the fellowship will not really benefit them a lot. And this is why you might be over actually qualified for the fellowship, so not every time if you're not get, get selected, that means uh, your your application is not good. What else? Uh, 
Someone asking for the application link, so I try to put for few, but if you go to the Refugees International website, they all can find it uh, there. Or you can also just Google it, uh, Refugees International Fellowship Program 2020-14. You will see that many sites have published it in past days about this program. I'm reading also a, a, a question here about an asylum seeker in South Africa from 2008-2011. Um, I mean, but I, 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 well, it depends on what is your current status in, in South Africa. So you're saying that you fled you never granted um, a refugee status. So what is your current status in, in South Africa? That I'm, I'm not trying to be very much legal, but I, I, don't, I don't understand what is your current status in South Africa. If you are in South Africa now as an asylum or as a um, refugee, yes, you can apply. But if you are not an asylum and not a refugee, you are on a student visa, you are in a temporary visa, in a any type of other residency or visa, you might not be qualified for the for the fellowship. I'm seeing also I'm currently uh, volunteering for an Afghan community organization in US, not my formal job. Uh, yes, it's not like you don't have to be like, you can be volunteering for sure, but also you have to show how for the last couple of years or so, how you have been doing the work and making an impact. Uh, do you have a volunteering program? We don't. Uh, again, I would say six fellows. I don't think I've been really... Regarding feedback on the non-accepted application, do are I going to give feedbacks on the application? It would be so hard to give a feedback because as I'm saying, uh, we have thousand and plus applications and it will be hard to give individualized feedback and this is why we're having this session to talk like why your application might not be qualified sometimes it's something in the application itself it's not coherent uh, the chat gpt thing very general no information might be overqualified you have been already we see like you might not be able to benefit a lot from our fellowship because you already have been in a certain position past the fellowship uh, experience. I'm seeing also someone is asking on campaign, we're already having a running campaign where we meet once monthly. No, yes, it's fine. If you already have a work you are doing, or I could support you in the work you're doing. It doesn't have to be like, um, it's starting a, a project from zero just to work with our eye. As I said at the beginning of the uh, of the call, it supports the work you're already doing. Like for an example, in Farhad case, you're already working on Yazidi, already wanted to go to Greece. And this is how we make that happen. It doesn't mean like just because for this fellowship, he created the Greece trip or the campaign to just do the fellowship. This will not have the most impact. The most impact would be that you're already doing a work, you already want to do that to complement your work, to support your work, and this is how we can help. Okay, uh, Sam Saruri, in terms of the work plan. This session is recorded, and how can they access? This is one of the questions to watch it later. Yeah, uh, it will be on the website. Uh, it will be uploaded on the website. Um, and for those who registered, for the for the session, we can send it. Uh, you will receive it uh, in an email, follow up email, uh, the recording. I'm also trying to go through the the questions. I see some one here from Sam Al Saruri. Can you use? Julia, uh, I will be offline because of my other engagement. So if there's anything from my side, if uh, the participants are asking anything, so. Thank you very much, Dean. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, everyone. And if there is anything, any further question from my side, so you can reach out to me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.
um i'm not sure if also i get your your question very well sam so you are asking if you if you can use your current organization to design and conduct awareness or advocacy activities within your own organization uh if you are saying that you work for an organization or you lead a refugee led organization for sure you can use the fellowship to support the advocacy activities that you are doing within your organization as i as i'm, I'm going to repeat the main idea of the fellowship is not to create a totally separate work plan that does not relate to the current activities or advocacy work that you are doing in your organization or your work. It is to complement what you're doing and to support what you're doing. So if you are having advocacy activities within your organization, okay, in the work plan, you can say, how can we support this activity, advocacy initiatives? It might be the three, like some of the tools that is mentioned in the questions, webinars, campaigns, publication, whatever, it might be something else. It might be you're doing another type of advocacy and you need support in the activities you're doing. And yes, you can include it. You don't have to create a work plan that is like so different from what you're doing just for the fellowship. It, the, uh, the more it is actually linked to your work and supports your work, the better. Uh, okay, you have a second question as a gentleman. Two applicants will have a bite. Yeah, it's fine. Some some uh, refugees don't have a refugee card, and that's that's fine. Hello, nice. Yeah. Do you see any questions that I didn't uh, answer for her? I'm trying. I'm trying to see. Stateless people can apply. I think. Yeah, we yes. had Ali with us uh, last yes. year. A refugee, an amazing refugee from uh, Rohingya. Yeah. Um, yeah, which so, yeah. Know, people also can apply. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have also Lebanon Syrian refugee have residency permit. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. if it's Syrian refugee, then of course we had a Syrian refugee already in our first cohort. Yeah, we had Wafa with us from Syria. You can see her profiles. Exactly. Yeah. Um, are stateless again, stateless, yes. And uh, there is a question uh, about like, is it a must to provide links? It is not a must. We know not everyone have links. So, and this will not mean your work is less important, but if you have links, you can share it with us, which is better. Yeah. And yes, IDPs internally displaced people are, are qualified to apply for sure. Yeah, that was also a question. Uh, okay, someone is asking about the working plan uh, should be strictly one page. Yes, the work plan is one page. You can, I yeah, in, in the cases which is like you have to write more, let's say you can go page and a half. And we are not writing, you are, we are not saying that you have to write a one page on campaign, a one page on field trip, and a one page on uh, publication. No, this is not what I meant. It is one page where you say the issue that you are trying to work on or to advocate for, and then you write the tools. For example, a campaign. What is this campaign? What is it about? How? What it targets? Whom? Whom it targets? Whom it gonna be? You gonna work with? And what is the impact? A second paragraph, if you're saying a field research, okay, field research trip to where exactly? Not Don't say to camps and centers in five countries. This is not gonna happen. You're gonna have to be specific to a camp, to a specific camp in a specific country to do a specific research. You have to say it in a paragraph, let's say. A third one, I'm gonna have a webinar. Okay, webinar about what exactly? If you are talking about access to education, you cannot say that I'm going to do a webinar on access to education. This is not. What exactly on access to education you are talking about, right? Whom it will target. Are you targeting to raise awareness uh, about this? Or you're targeting certain policy maker um, to kind of advocate for a certain policy? So you have to be specific. One page, maximum page and a half. I don't like to be honest, if it is going 
over two pages, when I get, it's hard to look at it because you already didn't follow the criteria. And be very specific. Okay. Uh, should uh, for example, Lebanon, Syrian. Yeah, that we answer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in Lebanon, that's fine. You can apply. I have a, speak French, but an intermediate level in English. Uh, that's a bit of a hard, a hard question because um, we want to make sure that you you benefit from the fellowship like the most you can. As long as you can really understand uh, English, write in English, that you should be fine. But at RI, for example, maybe we have one person who speaks French. So you want to be able to really benefit from us uh, the most, mostly if you, if you can't understand English well, and we want to make sure that you benefit from the, from the fellowship. But if you can understand, uh, the language if you can't speak english um you you can apply for sure what is the selection criteria the selection criteria as i mentioned uh you have to be forcibly displaced in different forms either asylum refugee internally displaced and now also someone talked about it a stateless or you have been a refugee at certain point you have to be an emerging leader for example let's say not someone who have been working for 15 years plus on this work. Emerging leaders are anywhere from one to seven, I don't know, 10 years uh, of work. And you should be able to demonstrate that you already have been doing the work. You're already having an impact, not just you're starting now. You should be able to demonstrate that you understand what advocacy is and you are able uh, to write a work plan that shows that you really understand what advocacy is and how to to work uh this is the the the, the criteria there is nothing more more than this the emerging leader the status and you should be able to show that you understand advocacy and you are making an impact yeah so we have also yeah i mean i can just answer this there is no there is no uh, selective from which camp or which country, wherever you are, which camp you are, as Horia just mentioned, uh, different status as refugees, uh, asylum seeker, even former refugees. There was someone from US who was uh, two or three years ago a refugee and is a former refugee, but yeah. So that's all okay to apply. Perfect. Then uh, age limit, Horia, anything regarding age limit? Like, we don't there, have is, limit. there is no limit to age, so everyone can apply. Uh, I see also Ahlam al Jamal saying, What if someone is affected by ongoing war in their home country and they're currently living in another country without having applied for refugee status? But the, I mean, this is, uh, uh, this is a trick question because. How, how how are you residing in that country based on what? What is your current status in, in the country you are residing, currently residing in? If you are on a student visa, for example, or you're working on a working visa, then no, you won't be one of the of the of the statuses. I'm not trying to make it hard, but also we'll have to make it a bit more specific to be able to really select people. Otherwise, the broader it gets, the harder to really select the people. So it all depends on what is your current status in the country that you are currently in, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, there is also a question regarding field trip. I would I want to answer that. Yeah. So for the field trips, if you want to go to several places, of course, you have one year, um, one year program as a fellow with Refugees International. And this will be a discussion and planning between you, like a co-working uh, a plan between you and Refugees International. Like for me, uh, we have joined in, in one place, but then I conducted in link with Refugees International to three other field trips uh, on my own. So yeah, it depends on the time, depends on how much work you want to do. If you go to a camp, you want to interview 1,000 people. 
or you want to interview 10 people. So it depends on your plan, the capacity, the data you want to collect, uh, the location you want to go. So I think, yeah, if that is possible uh, for your energy and the capacity and the support that Refugees International can support, then it's okay to go to even more than one place. Okay, I'm also writing some answers. Do you ever have heard? Apply, for, apply as a volunteer, volunteer charity? Yeah, definitely you can. Um, most of us were volunteers who were accepted, you know. We are, yeah, we have our own organization, but we are also voluntarily, we're working. So you don't need to be employed somewhere or need to be having a job somewhere. That doesn't impact if you are a volunteer or you are employed. Yeah. Someone is asking about if you had hard successful applicants from the DAP. We have uh, some applications uh, last week, I think, from the DAP. Uh, Last year is was our first year of the of the fellowship, and we didn't have someone from the DAP. This year we might end up having someone from the DAP. So it's not like um, a specific camp or a specific area. And we hope that like this year we will have some successful applicants. Why not? Like the DAP camp have a lot of talent, and a lot of refugees are really doing amazing work there. We have. Um, Nada, Nadaja, yeah, I mean, if you're traveling document, all our traveling documents get expired and we struggle to renew them, of course you are eligible, yeah, you are qualified to apply if you are, you will. Hawa, I see also how Muhammad Ali is saying, my question is, I have applied several times to refugee fellow program and they did not get the opportunity to amongst the students, so they are not selecting the DAP refugees, secondly. Um, as I said, this fellowship started just last year. So if you have applied, maybe you are talking about other fellows program because maybe you just have applied last year. Um, and as I said, because there is a lot of applications, over a thousand applications, that's why maybe it didn't work last year. It will work this year. It might work next year. Like I cannot really tell. And it all depends on how competitive the applications are uh, and it is not anything against any certain refugee in any camp. The DEP camp, as I was saying, is one of the camps that having really amazing work done by refugees. And hopefully this year we would have uh, a successful applicant from there. So it's all goes back to the applications themselves, not where they come from. There's yeah. no Elena says, uh, I mean, again, for field trips, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you will have all possible support from uh, Refugees International, and it's up to you to do the field trips with them, without them. So if you want to do more than one, you can do like, for me, within the past year with Refugees, I done like five field trips, but like one was specifically the both team of our organization and Refugees International, we joined in the same field. But even others were in collaborating with them, but they not necessarily in person with us. As yeah, most of the team of uh, RI are very yeah, very occupied and dealing with many things. So maybe they will not be able to always join you, but of course they will do their best to support in possible ways. Yeah. Um, do you think it would be good to consider as much as fellows as countries where refugee are so that you can have present yeah presentation in the most parts? I don't think this is something that will be deeply considered. It depends on the person, the profile of the candidate. If it's good, maybe two people from the same country, maybe from different countries, right, Horia? You're not doing. Yeah. But I'm don't... writing some answers for some questions. Uh, sorry, tell me. There will be no, I don't think there will be any uh, underestimate of a good candidate just because someone else from that region have been selected. I don't think that is the uh, case. Yeah. No. Yeah. no, it's not about, it's not about, uh, I mean, at the end we want like to benefit the more the, like the more like if it's up to me, we will not be choosing just six people. But hopefully, in the future, it will, we will have more chance to choose more. But it is just about how how hard it is to be able to choose 
uh, because you are all doing amazing work, to be honest. And when you are overwhelmed with over a thousand application, and now you just have to choose five people. So try to think how hard is that? And that doesn't mean your work is not good. Doesn't mean you are from certain place. It's not about where you're located. It's all about uh, applications we chose like potential. And we also feel like we can really benefit this person. This person can benefit from the fellowship. And this is the most important thing that you will really be able to benefit from the fellowship. Yeah. <laughs> We have, yeah, candidates, I mean, based in my, or my experience, candidate selection is based on the application or the any or the interview. Uh, I think if the application is, uh, is convincing and well written and based on the profile, when you get to the interview, that means you have convinced them and they are really interested on in your profile and they want to support. And I advise you to be well prepared and to be yourself in the interview and try to reflect on your application, but also add um, elements, uh, try to understand the questions. If you don't answer, answer their question, they are very cool in the interview, very supportive. You, They will all be there just to listen to you. I remember in my interview, they were like even the president and the vice president, uh, Others uh, were from the team who are I all well in the interview and they were just really good listener and even sometimes I don't understand the question they were very kindly explaining so yeah interview is an advanced step that mean you have a chance to get there so good luck when you get there yeah okay, okay. Uh, also uh, what, yeah so the the interview for sure would make a difference because as I'm saying you might have use the chat GPT, I don't know, and have a, a a perfect application. But when it comes to the interview, you really couldn't demonstrate how the fellowship would help you. You couldn't demonstrate um, your understanding of advocacy work. So the interview is really that um, level between the application and the acceptance, for sure. Yeah, um, Ahlam, Ahlam, she asked regarding other kind of support on the, um, the field trips. Yeah, Ahlam, I have an experience with that. Like, for example, when we go to Greece, we need a permission and um, authorization from the Greek Minister of Migration in order to be able to visit the trip. And then, of course, thanks to Refugees International, we were able to reach out to them soon and they give us answers uh, and yeah it will get, we get a positive answer and from the minister in greece and yeah so i think yeah they will do they will not do the work of governments but they would definitely connect and try to connect and ask authorities if that is supporting the work of the fellows yeah okay uh, um um, uh, okay, I think we managed to cover Yeah, there is also a question about uh, uh, this is, you you yeah. answered about yeah. the, the Ahlam question. And then uh, the field trip. Yeah, for we would it depend on the amount of funding you will need for the field trips. Mm -hmm. uh, Refugees International do have some sort of financial assistance for the field trips. And that is, uh, yeah, that is, uh, will depend on how much and the capacity of the funding that I have. They will definitely contribute and support in a possible way. Yeah. I mean, for me, my trips, uh, one of our trips were fully funded by RI. Yeah. So let's, let me, uh, this is the last question that I will answer. Any travel that, for example, if you have a document that will allow you to travel, like KMOD to COP28 or GRF, uh, or to a field trip, any travel costs are not included in the stipend, the 15K that you will receive as a personal stipend throughout the year. That is different. When we're talking about field trips or we're talking traveling for a meetings, that will be another budget that we will cover your trips from. You will not use your stipend or the 15K to cover any trip or any travel, if that makes sense, because I saw questions about that. It's a different... It's a different funding. <sighs> okay, uh, I think. How can I help the vision? 
Okay. Uh, uh, the last two questions, and we have to end this because it's we're already in the well, with an hour. So currently, for those who are not chosen by the fellowship, I cannot say we have an answer now on how can we work with you or how can we engage in your work. But we are working at RI to try and develop certain mechanisms or strategies to see that, as I said, we have a lot of good applications. We might not select them to be a fellows, but we need to work with you or we, we want to work with you in a way or another. But we're still thinking on how this would look like and what this work should should be. Is it Should we create a network for all these people who are interested to work? Should we... Uh, sometimes we, you might hear from us, could you join, that we received your application and we think you have good experience on internet displaced people, could you join this working group or uh, we have a conference, could you come? So now we, we know about you, but I cannot say we have right now a ways on how to work with people who have not been chosen, but believe me, we are there, we are thinking about it on how to engage with people in different ways. Uh, I'm not, I, I'm not, I, I can't be, uh, how is the 15K use personal? Uh, this is up to you. Uh, you will just receive, it's up to you to use this 15K because this 15K for us is for your work because you are expected to work, let's say three to five hours a week with RI. And this is the money that for your work. So you're not doing a free work during the fellowship. Oh, well, yeah, okay. I think I can I uh, I try to answer as much as uh, I can of the questions again if you have more questions I know there's a lot of you have more questions a lot of you are sending emails but I'm just overwhelmed with a lot of emails and this is why uh, I, I cannot answer every single email again thank you very very much for joining this session uh, it was great to, to have you today with us here. Thank you very much, Farhad, for joining us. Uh, again, have a, have a great day, and I hope this session have helped you all, or you find it at least beneficial. Have a great day. Thanks, Surya. Good luck, everyone. Ciao. Good luck.